Yes, yes. Welcome, friends. This is the End Time Church. You are the End Time Church. Yes, you are. And so is Pastor Christopher Anderson to my one of my sides. And, uh, of course, the one and only Tyrannosaurus Rexus uh, down below. The Keeping one and only. The one and only, indeed. And thank God for that. <laughs> no, that's what they say about me. Uh, we only need one of, one of us, right? Amen. I'm, I'm just kidding. We need a lot of Tyrans out there. Okay. Praise God, guys. Uh, we are back. By the way, Al Fadi last week, remember, if you were here for him, uh, that like the next morning, or even though we're in the middle of, you know, planning for this conference that we just got over this weekend, which was awesome, uh, he's like, he's like, man, you got to get me that intro. <laughs> <laughs> I said, for real? He's like, yes. How do I, you know, how do I get, make it for me? You know, show me where to get it. Like, right, 10-4, roger that. And so anyway, it's pretty, I guess it's pretty, uh, it's a hit. I know it's psyched up Pastor Jake like a, like a, like a wrestling intro. <laughs> right? But you you know, you hear the music and he, anyways, I hope you like it too. Uh, yeah, a lot of a warrior entrance, running and grabbing the ropes and- don't even joke about my man, Ultimate Warrior. Okay, and that's why we're friends. Love that guy. That's true. That's if if, if that's all we've got. That and yeah. the Lord, we're good for life. The Taron's like what? Yeah, I'm like Ultimate like, Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> ultimate who? Uh, well, we have other things in common. So praise God. Yeah. Now I would do this if just uh, I could hang out with my friends here. That's uh, that's why we. We love the fellowship uh, here at ETC. And so, as always, just the uh, normal announcements and, and housekeeping items, please chat away. If you're here on our official website, endtime.church, just create a name for yourself. It doesn't even have to be your real name. And chat away, say, you know, where you're from, if this is your first time or hundredth time, whatever. If you have any type of, obviously, prayer request or, or thing that you want to bring up during the service, just go ahead and uh, say so. Um, somebody will be there to, to pray with you and, and, and uh, whatever else is needed for sure. And that goes also if you're on Facebook or YouTube, whether it's on our official channels or Wings of the Eagle or Boot Camp Ministries. Awesome uh, little operation there. Uh, wherever you're watching us, Armageddon News, just go ahead and chime in uh, as well. We'd be happy to address your question or comment or concern at some point during the night. Uh, and so we are very eager to get to this tonight. But we have an app. Please go get that. App.endtime.church will bring you to exactly your location that you need for your device. Even on your computer, it'll work right on your browser. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, 24-7 fellowship. You don't have to wait for Monday nights to do that for sure. And uh, hit the contact us button. What's it called? Prayer. The prayer button uh, here on the website. That'll give you a form. Contact us direct about whatever the request is whether prayer or not whatever it is go ahead and hit that and then your uh previous episodes or previous messages uh will be under my brain is gone i had a really good dinner i can't think playlist playlist is what you want to hit there okay and we encourage you all to share please right sharing is caring uh folks have got to know that this is available to them right so just share it on your networks your facebook youtubes you know your twitters your instas whatever uh, go ahead and share it tonight. Share it right now. You know, nice. Yeah, right this second. And so please do that and give. We are brought to you by your tithes and offerings, and that's it. So you've got to ask the Lord, hey, I think this is of you, God. What should I do to help them? And he will tell you, and you do that. That's the deal. Please do so, because uh, we definitely um, would appreciate that, right? Um, what else? That's, I think that's about all I got. I want to be minimalistic tonight. Prayer app. Thank you. We do have a prayer app, don't we? Uh, yeah, it's called Prayer Force. Because. Ultimate prayer. What? <laughs> I said ultimate prayer force. <laughs> okay, well, listen. Warrior. Ultimate warrior, right? Uh, that's, but that's, that works. It is ultimate, actually. Thank you, Pastor Anderson, for putting that crawl down there. Yeah. Uh, that's it. That's the new app. Go grab it. It's for one purpose only. Prayer, uniting in prayer from all over the globe. Whether you're a Christian from whatever nation, you get on there, you click the section of the world you want to pray for or pray with, and there it is. And you want to add something to it? There's a place for that. You want to request prayer for yourself? There's a place for that. 
Want to pray with someone else who requested prayer for themselves? There's a place for that. So just go, use it, get it, share it. It's, it's multi, you know, ministry, pan ministry, however you want to say it. It does, doesn't belong to anybody. It's just for the body. Uh, so please go ahead and get that and use it. Thank you, uh, Pastor Anderson, for reminding me about that. Um, um, yeah, that's kind of half true. Um <laughs> Oh, mostly. Uh, anyway, yeah, man, I, I'm excited about tonight because uh, anytime Chris speaks, we get a lot of encouraging words afterwards. So I'm not sure if it's why that is exactly other than that he's good and uh, the Lord seeks fit to use him uh, very easily. Um, we've got what? Text alerts? Nah, you don't need to hear about that. All right. So taste and see that Jesus has not promised us an easy walk. Uh, nothing but good times, right? And blessings after we accept Jesus, right? Isn't that how it goes? I haven't had one of those yet. Um, I know you all haven't, but that's okay. That is okay. There was a honeymoon phase and then got real again, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, some people it's really quick, right? Yeah. Um, that honeymoon phase, because like it, Randy even makes a practice now of saying, "Hey, if you're a new believer, awesome, you know, fantastic. I'm lo- I love you. I'm with you. We're gonna do this thing." And by the way, here comes the devil, right? So, and that uh, wasn't referencing my wife behind me. <laughs> no, no, that's unfortunate timing. That was unfortunate. Uh, timing. Anderson, forget- no, that is an angel of art and everything else. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> No, no negative, nary a negative thing. Never, never. Oh, man. That was funny. Uh, so anyways, um, yes, we want to be the be the body of Christ. That's why we're here. Uh, we want to hear from the Lord. We want to worship the Lord. Um, and we want to make sure that we're we're ready for what's what's coming down the pike, whether it's our individual walk, right, uh, or these, these days that we're in. Because uh, why do we call this the end time church? Because we just believe that's the days that we're in. And it's just kind of admitting the facts. And so let's let's act like it, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, Taryn, any words of wisdom? Yeah. But if you, you are a new, if you are a new believer and you're with us, hang out with me because I really feed off your energy. True. <laughs> Vitality. Yeah. <laughs> Make yeah. yourself known in the app and speak up because we love new believers. True. Yeah, that, that is true, isn't it? They yeah. shine. They sparkle. Yep. They remember Amen. they're so excited. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Please do so. That's a, that's an awesome part of the app. Where you know, again, anytime, any day, just hey, I got this going on. Hey guys, I'm a new believer. Hey, I just found hey. you. Hey, we love it. We love it. It's just fantastic. Um. So and and prayer request tonight, of course. Anything that you need uh, prayer for, you want us to pray with you about, we will do so right here before we leave the air. So go ahead and submit that stuff um, at any point tonight, again, on our site or Facebook or YouTube. And we've, at some point, um, we are going to point you to a uh, little form to fill out. And uh, I don't know if you want to save that till the end or not, but we'll tell you where to go to get that because we want everyone's participation uh, if we could. Anyways, all right, that's it. Praise the Lord. So yep. tonight. Uh, there's going to be some challenges out there tonight. So get some pencil, get a paper. I'm going to challenge you to write some stuff down and then to share some things throughout this week, but also on the app. So make sure you are on the app this week. You know, if, it's, if you go a while without looking at it this week, I challenge you for sure right now at the outset to get on there this week throughout the week and see what's happening. You'll know more as we get into the message tonight, what I'm talking about. So make sure you have the app, please. Thank you. Thank you. And but is this, you said a pencil. Can I use a pen? No, pencil. Number two. We have crayons Why? here. <laughs> no, wait, I was going to use a highlighter. I was going to look at this. Uh, oh, well, that makes uh, all the difference. You're no, good. No, wait, I got to use this for something. This nice. is, I, I, didn't, I didn't do this. I didn't buy it. This is like the fourth or fifth time in the past couple of years some random company just to my P.O. box sends this. Nice. Wants me to buy more. Yeah. You got them for free. Yeah. And they yeah, they just keep sending them for free. And uh they they lifted my whole like official the actual bird and the actual font of Man. can you see that? Wow. Of the Eagle. They the goodness of the Lord right here. They lifted the entire thing. I'm like, thank you very much. I'm not gonna buy your bird, but I'll take it. Um, I'll, I'll use that one. Anyway, so if, if you'll give me dispensation, Pastor Anderson, 
to write with this, that would be awesome. Very well. That would be, that would be ultimate. Can I? Very no? well. Oh, very well. Fantastic. All right. I'm ready. All right. Um, Taryn is going to uh, praise God for, with us and lead us in that. So batten down the hatches, and uh, we'll be back in just a few moments. Praise the Lord, guys.
Let's pray. Father, we acknowledge your lordship here now. Even though we are separated by miles, hundreds, thousands of miles even, you have connected your church. Your Holy Spirit is more than enough to speak to us, to comfort us, yes, to challenge us. We need to hear from you. We need to be fed by the vine. Let us abide in you, Jesus. Glorify your name. To know that you, yourself, are among us here tonight. Though we be separated, we are still gathered. So we claim that as true. Be with us. Give us courage. Give us grace. Give us the mind to understand your holy word and your Holy Spirit and your holy heart so we can be one with you as you are one with your son. In his name we ask, Yeshua, the King of Israel. Amen. Amen. Well, Taryn, thank you so much for the worship tonight. Uh, those are some beautiful songs. Um, you know, really incredible. I like the uh, I like the Irish feel as well. I know others did as, here tonight as, also. So thank you so much for that. Tonight, the message is titled "Taste and See." Taste and see what? Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Say, Chris, how is this really applicable to us today? And we're going to get into that. And we're going to talk about that tonight. But tonight, I just want to just go ahead and pray real quick. I know Pastor Manti just did. Um, you know, definitely need a little focus. Pray for me tonight. Um, found out a little earlier today that one of my childhood friends uh, passed away uh, last night. And uh, so a lot of thoughts and things with that throughout the day, uh, definitely vying for my attention tonight. So, um, you know, pray for me tonight. I'm just going to go ahead and open a prayer uh, again. So, Father, I thank you for this opportunity to, to come here and to speak your word, to speak what you placed in my heart. I would ask for uh, ears to hear and eyes to see what you have for us tonight, God. I pray that this word goes forth, God, and accomplish the thing for which you have sent it, Lord, that it will be Seed to the sower, God. Water to the seed already planted. Thank you in Jesus' name. The goodness of God. Many of us here tonight can think of times in our life where we've seen the goodness of God in our lives. We've seen God move in unexplainable, marvelous ways. And it's caused our faith to soar. It's deepened the roots of our faith. We've seen God move in our lives, some of us here, in, in such unexpected ways and in, in such unexpected timing. It's not always in our own time, but it's in God's timing, and it takes us back. It causes us to think. I'm going to share with you, before we get into it, just one example in my own life. And this is a story I don't share very often, but I'm going to share it tonight. And I'm going to be real with you guys tonight. Yes, I'm a pastor. Yes, you know, I've been in the faith for many, many, many years. But that doesn't mean that I'm perfect. And I'm going to share with you tonight a little bit of my, my own imperfection and how the goodness of God has come out through this imperfection. So like some of us here tonight, you know, I was married before I met my current wife. And um, too young, shouldn't have done it. But I did. And I made a choice. And the marriage had good moments, but for the most part, I don't remember very many great things about it. You know, there were times, there were moments, but the failure was simply that both myself and my ex um, didn't make it work. We thought of ourselves. We're selfish. Both of us were. We both contributed to the downfall of that marriage. And now before you go crazy and start asking, I did have biblical foundations uh, for terminating it. Um, but I went through a very, very hard point in my life as a result of that failure. You know, I'm not one that looks at a promise that I make lightly. I take everything that I say and I do seriously. 
I'm not just going to tell you I'm going to do something and not do it and not follow through. That's just my personality. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. And so it was difficult for me in the situation, you know, because of this failure, because I wasn't able to follow through, you know, with the promise that I made and a vow I made. And so I was pretty broken up and I went through a hard time. As many people who might have experienced divorce themselves can attest to, you've gone through a hard time. And to add an insult to injury, I was in Afghanistan for a year when all this stuff really imploded. Uh, I mean, it was falling apart before then, but it imploded out there. And so I was stuck there. Could not, nothing I could do about it. I just had to deal with it. And I spent many nights, and I can picture it as if it were yesterday, praying in the middle of the night in the desert, watching aircraft come in. And I even watched a firefight one night in the distance. As tracers are going back and forth. That was pretty neat. And I remember crying out to God, just pleading with God, Lord, you know what's good for me. You know, you, you know what's best. I trust you. And I remember praying for a woman that was going to be a godly woman to come into my life that I can be with. I remember praying for a woman that was after God's heart, that would love me the way that I loved her. You know, my mother always said that when I love someone and I love, I, I love unconditionally, I love fully, and I give myself into that. And she, my mom's right. You know, and I wanted to find somebody that was very much like that, you know, and, and I do admit, you know, I prayed for a very beautiful wife, you know, um, who wouldn't. Um, but I did that and I and I saw God and I prayed I, I, for many nights just praying for, for God's will to be accomplished and for that future woman in my life, you know, to be a godly woman that would care for me the way I did for her. And it took about a year and a half, but out of that, the goodness of God was revealed because I met my current wife. And uh, she is a she is a woman after God's heart. She loves me unconditionally. I don't know how she does sometimes because I can bug her like no other sometimes. I mean, many husbands out there do. Can I get an amen? And I imagine husbands all over the world right now are saying amen, pastor, because that's the truth. We bug our wives. But she loves me, you know, more than I can even imagine. and. Um, you know, I am so incredibly blessed. You know, what, what the devil meant for evil, God turned into good. And through that, you know, through that tragedy that I went through, through the hardship and the heartache that I went through, you know, just praying to God and God brings this incredible woman. That's even more than what I prayed for, more than I was asking him for, is a testament to the goodness of God in my life, even though I feel like even now I don't deserve it. You know, I made the comment the other day that when my wife agreed to marry me, you know, when I when I approached her and, and, and proposed to her that I was really swinging for the bleachers and uh, she's not even in my league. I, I fully believe that with all my heart. And, um, you know, some of you that know my wife might say the same thing. But um, the reality of it is, is God blessed me. His goodness was revealed to me through my wife. And I know some people have stories like that. You can look and uh, see the goodness of God in your life. You can see God's work. When we trust him, when we placed our trust and our hope and our faith in God, that what he has for us is better than what we have for ourselves. You know, sometimes we get a little impatient with God and we, we want to go ahead and we want to go after that thing that we think we need, we, that we think we want, that we think is good for ourselves. And it might be for a moment, in a moment, it might be an immediate high for us might immediately meet a need, but in the long run, it doesn't fulfill the need. It doesn't fulfill us. And I could say tonight that my wife fulfills me. She completes me. And it's because of the goodness of God and my trust that he knew what was best. And my faith in him that I believe that she came, that God organized this and made this happen. So I'm an incredibly blessed man tonight to have such a woman like like my wife in my life. Um, every day I look at her and I'm reminded of the goodness of God to me. And so I wanted to open tonight's message with that brief story. I didn't want to go too far into it. I didn't I didn't run this by her before I got on, but I'm sure she's fine with it. But tonight, if you have your Bibles with you, and I trust you do, because many of us should be at the house, probably within arm's reach of, of a paper Bible. Look, I got like two right here and another three on the shelf, not far from there. If you want to turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 34, we're going to go and read verse 7 through 9 tonight. 
And I did write it out. I do have my notes, but I'm going to the scripture anyway. Why? Because I encourage all of us to go to the word and don't trust what I write because sometimes I fat finger things and mess it up, right? We all do. So go to the source. Psalms 34, verse 7 through 9. And I would say, if you get there, say amen. But I can't hear you saying amen. So write amen when you get there. I got one amen, but I think that was from about uh, 10 minutes ago. So it don't count, Sandra, at YouTube land. Oh, here we go. We got a few. All right. So the word of God says this, starting in verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear him and delivers them. Verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Amen. Verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him or no lack for those who fear him. Now, I want to focus in tonight on the word taste. Taste and see the goodness of God. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 says, But blessed is the man who trusts the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Now, let me ask you this tonight. Whom do you place your confidence? Now, I just got through a a period of my own life. You know, I, I lost the job I had. I got a new one now, praise God. But I lost the job that I had. And as a, as a man, a head of the household, as someone who likes to have a plan, I struggle with this. The trust and the confidence part of see in Jeremiah 17, 7. I wanted to have a plan. I wanted to know what was going to happen. And so I, I spent two weeks, even though the, that day the Lord spoke to me and said, be still and know that I'm God. And if many of you even remember, that following Monday, I got on here and preached a message on the same thing that the Lord was telling me in that moment. Be still and know he is God. And it took me two weeks. Let me take that back. Two and a half weeks of fighting with myself before I was able to let go and place my confidence in the Lord. Before I was able to place my trust in the Lord. Before I was able to find my refuge in the Lord. And in that waiting, the Lord brought about a new job for me that is paying better. I get more time off, and it's everything that I wanted in my heart, but that never even verbalized. The Lord knew, and he he answered it. And I could go into details about that. But because I was able to place my trust in the Lord, my confidence in the Lord, because I was able to take refuge in him, and I had reverential respect and fear him through obedience, I was able to taste and see the goodness of God manifest it in my life. And I believe you can too. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 20. Whoever heeds instruction will find success. But he who, but and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. Do you find your life blessed today? If not, Do you trust in the Lord? Going back to the book of Psalms, chapter 31, and specifically verse 8, that word taste in Hebrew, and I'm I'm going to butcher this in Hebrew, but it is te'amu. I butchered it. Hebrew scholars, please don't crucify me here. And that word in Hebrew means to taste or to perceive. And then when we dive in further, we see that same word used in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 18, is used figuratively, meaning to experience. So in other words, that word taste, when it is not specifically referring to tasting something with your tongue, tasting some food, it is specifically in reference to an experience. It is experiential. So in other words, in the book of Psalms chapter 34, verse 8, It's saying, experience the Lord and see he is good. So how can we experience God in our lives? Hebrews chapter 6, verse 5, another and other instances that is talking about having tasted the word of God. 
We are seeing about the word logos, which is Yeshua made flesh. Experiencing Jesus. How do we experience Yeshua, Jesus, in our lives? One, you are a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. See, many people that go to church, many people that say they are Christians today, they are hearers of the word only, but they are not doers of it. Jesus said, "You will know they will know that you are my disciples by what? By your love. Love is an action. Love is commanded to be done. You know, Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. What is his commandment? That you love one another. And you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's love. It's the action of love. That is how we gain an experiential knowledge of Jesus Christ in our lives is through our love for one another. How's our love today? Wherever you're sitting at today, in YouTube land, and Facebook land, and endtime.church, wherever you may be at in the world today, across New Zealand, or Ireland, or Australia, or here in the U.S., or Canada, or any other place that people are gathered, that I know you're gathered from tonight, how is your love tonight? How is your love? You know, on one rarely experiences God on the mountaintop, in the good times, in the times of blessing, in the times of great success. But it is in the valleys of our trials and tribulations where we experience his goodness. Why? Because that's when we put our trust in him the most. When we can't do it ourselves, we put our trust in God and God reveals himself. He comes and, and makes his home with us. He he gives us an experience with him. If we place our trust in him, if we find a refuge in him, if we place our confidence in him. King David's relationship with God grew through his trials, through his troubles, through his tribulations, through the problems in life. That is when we have to place our trust in God. And that's where God meets us. And that is where our experience with God grows. That's where we can taste and see the Lord is good. <clears throat> Excuse me. So many of us, a lot of times, especially here in the West, we complain. We complain about our plight. We complain about, you know, everything that's going on in the world. We don't want to be a changer. We don't want to be an earth shaker. We just want to be happy and content in our blessings, in our Western mindset, in our prosperity, in our materialism. We just want to sit here and be pampered. We want to grow fat on the word, yet we're sitting here lean, anorexic even, on application of the word. And tonight, people, that is a problem that has to be addressed. The tasting of the of the goodness of God occurs at an experiential level when we experience him. And we experience them the most through our trials and tribulations, through the hardships. Jesus never promised us a rose garden. You know, I think of the old Marine Corps uh, recruiting poster where I had a drill instructor standing in the face of a recruit looking pretty stern. And he said, we never promised you a rose garden. Guess what? In this life, we're going to have trouble. Jesus says he didn't come to bring unity or anything. He came to bring division. He came to bring a sword to, to set Brother against father, mother against daughter. This is going to happen. But in those moments of division, in those moments of persecution, the moments of the sword, we can have the experiential knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ in a greater way we have never even known. So why are we shunning tribulation? Why are we shutting these things happening to us for the cause of Christ? Now I need to get that cross here. I need to stop here right now. We need to take this path. Sometimes we, we bring problems on ourselves and it isn't for the cause of Christ, even though we might look and say, oh, well, I did that. And they're persecuting me because I'm a Christian. Well, see, you know what? Sometimes they're persecuting you because you did something stupid. And the Bible talks about reaping what you sow. Sometimes we sow some bad seeds and do some bad things and the time for the harvest has come and we want to sit there and say we're being persecuted for Christ and that ain't the truth. Let's get real tonight, church. We do dumb things. We're humans. I do dumb things all the time. 
I mess up all the time. I am not infallible. I am capable of messing up, and so are you. But it's okay. It's okay to mess up. It's okay to fall down. It's okay to scrape our knees. It's okay to be battered. It's okay to want to curl up in a ball sometimes and you want to quit. What's not okay is quitting. What's not okay is staying down. What's not okay is giving up our faith and walking away. That's what's not okay. But it is okay to struggle. We all go through those moments. We all go through hardship. It's called being human. It's called being a follower of Christ. We don't belong to this world. We're a sojourner. We are simply on a journey from here to there, and we're trying to bring as many people with us as we can. Or we should be. So tasting and seeing the goodness of God, oftentimes the goodness of God is experienced in the valleys of life. What about the disciples? You know, what about those who actually walked with Jesus? You know, it's easy to talk about, you know, myself and talk about, you know, my own failures, you know, with with my previous marriage and and the things that happened there and talk about the goodness of God and how I've I've received a blessing and a new and a different wife, a new wife that is beyond anything I could ever hope, dream or imagine. And some of us here tonight can talk about the blessings and the goodness of God in our lives. But what about those who spent three and a half years roughly walking with Jesus, watching him, touching him, handling him, seeing him? Thomas doubted the risen Messiah until he had experienced placing his own fingers in the Lord's nail wounds and placing his hand in his side where the spear pierced him. Peter denied Christ three times while Jesus was being beaten. Denied him three times. Further, Peter was rebuked by Paul for for segregation at a communal meal, sitting with the Jews instead of the Gentiles. Paul rebuked them. Peter and Thomas had had failures. Peter and Thomas had doubts. Peter and Thomas did dumb things. We all do. These men walked with Christ. Peter, the rock upon which Christ built the church, it has something to do with his confession, but it has more so to do with Peter himself being the leader of the others. You know, be having the pastoral mantle placed on him over the others when Peter was restored and Jesus asked him to feed his sheep. Yet both Thomas and Peter gave their lives for the cause of Christ. Peter was crucified upside down in Rome in around 66 AD, which was about the same time that Paul was beheaded. Peter chose to be crucified upside down as his form of death because he did not feel worthy to die in the same manner that Christ did. Thomas became an active missionary in East Syria, in Eastern Syria, and even into India, where the ancient Marthoma Christians claim Thomas as their founder. And Thomas was speared to death by soldiers. Both men gave their lives for the cause of Christ. Didn't shrink away. Andrew was crucified in Greece. He preached the gospel in Asia Minor, which is modern-day Turkey in Greece, and in various Eastern Bloc states. Philip was arrested and killed in retaliation for converting the wife of a Carthaginian Roman proconsul to the faith. Matthew, the tax collector who wrote the book of Matthew, preached in Persia and Ethiopia, where he was stabbed to death in Ethiopia. Bartholomew preached in India, Armenia, Ethiopia, and Southern Arabia. In Southern Arabia, he was killed for his faith. James, the son of Aliphas, was stoned and clubbed to death in Syria, where he preached the gospel. Simon the Zealot, the Zealot was a group of people. Simon the Zealot was ministering in Persia, modern-day Iran, and was killed for not sacrificing to the sun god. Matthias who replaced Judas among the twelve, preached in Syria with Andrew, and he was burned to death. John, the one who wrote five books in the New Testament, the Beloved, one of the sons of thunder, died of old age. However, he was exiled on Patmos by the Roman government where he started a Christian church, and he was given the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
this Christian church that he started, they, they had a, after, I think it was about 150 years, there was actually a, a, uh, cathedral built there. And the whole island was converted to Christianity. And it was that way for a long time until the Muslims came and took it over. John, in his exile, didn't sit there quietly. He had an experience with the Lord Jesus Christ and wrote the book of Revelation and started a church and converted an entire island of prisoners, because at the time it was a prison colony, to faith in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Early church tradition says that John was was exiled to Patmos by the Romans after he had escaped unharmed from an attempt to kill him with boiling oil. You know, I have to stop here for a minute. We have to dive into this just briefly. If John was imprisoned on an island in Patmos, sentenced to hard labor, which is what that imprisonment was, at an old age, and he still converted an island to Christ. He still experienced the goodness of God. He tasted the goodness of God and he wrote the book of Revelation, which us here at End Time Church read a lot. We study a lot. The words of John, these were written in a moment of persecution against John. Do you think that our problems are really that big that we can't get out and spread the gospel? Do you think our problems today are really that grand? That we can't at least tell somebody about the goodness of God in our own lives? Heaven forbid. James, the son of Zebedee, who was the brother of John that we just talked about, the other son of thunder, was killed by Herod Agrippa I about 11 years after the resurrection of Christ. James was thrown from the top of the temple, and he didn't die. When the authorities came out and saw him still breathing, they beat him to death with a club. He was the first of the disciples to be killed. And he was also credited being the first bishop of Jerusalem. All these fathers of the faith experienced the Lord. They walked with him. They touched him. They heard his messages. They were discipled by Jesus. What a, what a master to be discipled by. You know, some of us here, you know, we, they, you know, people want to learn from me. They want to learn from Pastor Manti. They want to learn from Pastor Jake. They want to learn from, you know, other people here. But my goodness, we are nothing compared to learning from Christ, learning from Jesus himself. These men walked with him for three and a half years. They had an experience with the Lord and it changed their lives to where they gave their lives for the cause of Christ. Not just surrendering their own wants and desires and, 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 and needs. That was a given. But they laid down their lives. They shed their blood for Christ. For the cause of Christ. Now let me ask you this. Would somebody willingly be burned alive for something they thought was a lie? Would somebody willingly go through the torture of being crucified? For a lie. Crucifixion lasted days. In some cases. And it was one of the most humiliating forms. Of execution in the Roman world. Who would who would go through that for a, a lie? Who would want to be thrown from the top of a building. And then beaten to death with a club. For a lie. Who would go and spread this message across the known world. To be killed by indigenous people. With spears and knives. Who would take the risk of converting a pagan leader's wife to the faith, knowing that they're probably going to die? How many of you tonight, watching right now, whether live or, at, or after the service tonight, would say that you would be willing to lay down your life and lose everything, family, friends, everything, give it all up for a lie? I wouldn't, and neither did these men. They gave their lives for something that they knew, that they had touched, that they had seen, that they had tasted the goodness of. 
You know, we sit back, we, we talk about all the, the things that go wrong in the world. And I'm, I'm guilty of this too. We all are, you know, about the, the things that are happening, the trials and troubles. We get frustrated about COVID. We get frustrated, you know, about job losses. I mean, two things I've been frustrated about recently. Um, you know, we, we get frustrated because our family don't talk to us because we're Christians. We get frustrated because, well, people don't just understand us. They just can't get us. They just don't understand where we're coming from. We get frustrated by people in the church who we think should be one way and we leave the church, but are we really at at church for God at that point? Or are we at church at that point for somebody else? You know, we pray for God to move. We ask God to do something in our churches, in our congregations, in our lives. But God is looking at us and saying, I want to have you do it. I want you to experience my goodness by you stepping out and trusting me, putting your faith in me, putting your confidence in me and allowing me to have my way and my will in your life. And we deny God the opportunity to be in our lives in such a way because we don't place our confidence and our hope and our trust in him. He is not truly our refuge because we're at ease. As some would say in the day at ease in Zion, we're at ease in our lives. We're at ease in our comfort. We're at ease in the good things of life. I mean, how many churches here in the West have lost their minds over something as simple as COVID-19? Look, there's a lot to debate on that. I get it. I, I totally do. And guess what? I've made those debates. But at the end of the day, it's not relevant to our mission at hand. And our mission is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our mission is sowing the seeds of the gospel. It's watering seeds of gospel and it's harvesting seeds of gospel. We all have one of those functions that we are called to do. Why? Because we have the great commission over our lives saying to go into the world, make disciples of the nations. And we are failing miserably at that in the West. And I would even go as far as to say, we are not being successful at that right here at End Time Church. How many of us tonight here, even at ETC, can say that we are out there making disciples? Because we are commissioned to make disciples of all nations. I'm not here to tickle emotions to make people feel good tonight. I'm here to tell you the truth. And the truth is, we're not making disciples. A couple of us may be. But we're not making disciples of the nations. Because we're not honoring God by doing what he says, what he's commissioned us to do, we're not having an experience with him. But I promise you tonight, if you were to go out and start taking seriously the great commission to make disciples, you will taste and see the goodness of God unlike anything you've ever experienced in your life. Even the little things, the thing that I talked about to open this up would be nothing compared to what the goodness of God shows. And trust me, I know what that is as well. You know, some of us will pray for the anointing of God in our lives. We will pray for God to to do a mighty work in our churches, in our congregations, even here at End Time Church or at your work or whatever it may be. But we are so accustomed to the comforts of life. We're not willing to make the sacrifices necessary that, that the anointing requires to be the difference maker. We keep pushing it off on someone else, but God is saying, I want you. I want you to lay down your wants, needs, and desires. I want you to place your trust in me. I want you to place your confidence in me. And he's waiting for us to take the step of faith to place our hope and trust and confidence in him and watch him do amazing things. So that we can experience firsthand the goodness of God in our lives. I think God is tired tonight of our excuses of why we're not doing stuff. Why we're not making disciples of nations. Why we're sitting at our houses on Sundays instead of finding a congregation to fellowship with. That's really important. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. The word of God says this. Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. But exhorting one another. And so much more as you see the day approaching. Guys, here at End Time Church, we're talking about the coming of the the day of God, the day of the Lord. We're talking about these things. Often, we're pointing to what's happening in the Middle East. We're showing the prophecies in the book of Daniel. We're going through this readily all the time. And the day of the Lord is approaching sooner than it was even yesterday. But some of us are still making excuses while we don't fellowship with a local body of believers. And I would say this, if you can't find 
a church to attend. And the many churches that are scattered throughout cities across America or even neighboring cities, take the step of faith and start a home church. I understand. I understand. We can't always find that. God is not always leading us to a place. I get that. Start a home church. Start a fellowship where you are at for other people in a similar situation. And I promise you, you will taste and see the goodness of God. Because tasting the goodness of God is experiential. What does that mean for us? It's in our gathering time that we often find strength and encouragement. Or as the writer of the book of Hebrews says, exhorting one another. We find that in our trials because we need strength and encouragement when we're down, when we're in the valley. And God places other believers in our lives to bring us up, to lift us up, to pray for us, to come around us. God uses other believers oftentimes to reveal his goodness. One such purpose of the body of Christ, not only is it for exhorting one another, but God has given us the fivefold ministry, pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, and prophets, for the building up and the edifying of the body of Christ. How can we have biblically mandated growth and edification in the body of Christ without ministerial oversight? You see, there's many Christians today running around. They don't have a pastor that tends for them. They don't have somebody, a teacher that's teaching them. They don't have somebody that's mentoring them in the faith. Many churches today never don't have prophets that are operating in the body of Christ. They don't have apostles there. Some say, well, hey, pastor, you know, there are no apostles anymore. There are no more prophets anymore. I beg to differ. Because if, if that was done away with when Christ came back, then why did Paul write about it? Pretty simple. God uses those in such offices as instruments of exhortation, strength, and spiritual growth. You know, I pray that Pastor Manti and myself have been instrumental in your spiritual growth and maturation. But if you guys aren't out there doing and practicing what we're teaching and pouring into you guys, then all we're doing is feeding you. You got to exercise it too. But even us here at End Time Church being a fully digital church, We can only do so much. You know, we can't have the successful structure of accountability that's present necessarily within an in-person traditional gathering. And so we have limits to our discipleship ability, even here at End Time Church, just because we're not there with you. But we sure try. And so as I come to a conclusion tonight, I want to encourage you to participate in a local fellowship of believers. Because God has placed ministers there in the various offices of ministry as a means to encourage and exhort, challenge you, help you grow. There's other believers there, too, that can do the same. Look, we're here here at End Time Church. We do what we can do here. We have plenty of people, and we all have an experience with this type of fellowship and with this type of discipleship, limited as it may be. But there can be more for you. So I challenge you to try to find a local fellowship of believers. And if you can't, ask the Lord about starting a home church, a home fellowship. I know myself and some others here would love to talk with you about that, to help you with that. You know, that's our jobs as pastors, me and Pastor Manti. That's our jobs to help you step out in faith, to give you some ideas, to be a sounding board for you, to talk to. We can encourage you in doing this. You know, so pray about that. If you can't find a church, pray about becoming a home fellowship and inviting others. It's very easy to listen to the issues of traditional churches, but it's something entirely different to step out and be the change that we're asking others to be. Secondly, take the, and this is the challenge I was talking about at the beginning. So if you got that pencil with you or the pen, if you're a Pastor Manti, and a piece of paper, I want you to do this. And I mean this. If you don't take anything else from the message tonight, take this. For the next couple of days, next day or two, write out a list of the times you have personally experienced the goodness of God in your life. I'm not talking about when you've seen a miracle. I'm talking about if you've been the recipient of a miracle, write that down. 
I'm talking about your testimony of salvation, where you were at, who you were before you came to faith and who you are now. I'm talking about things that have changed you. Write that down. Some people might have a really big list. Some people might have a small list. I'm not going to put a number on how many things to, to do, to write down. But I want you to write more than one, if at all possible. So write that list of stuff. And I want you to keep that list somewhere that you will see it and read it every day. God's goodness is unique to each and every one of us based on our own lives, based on our own life circumstances, what we're going through, what we're not going through. God's goodness is revealed to us all uniquely and differently. And then what I want to ask you to do is after you have that list together, I would like you to get on the End Time Church app, get on the community page, and I want you to post at least one thing, one thing, one example of the goodness of God that you have experienced that changed your life. I want you to share that on the community page so we can all look at that and grow strength and be encouraged and exhort it from each other's experience with God. You never know who's going to look at that. We have over four or 500 people on the app daily, regularly. That isn't just the people that are subscribed to it. That's people that are on there participating in one way, shape, or form, whether it's just looking at it or actually contributing. So contribute this. Commit to tri- attributing, contributing one example on the app. And I'm going to ask that to be done before the end of this work week. So by Friday, contribute that. And understand that when you write that, somebody could be going through something and that example could be an answer to their prayers, change their life. That could be an experiential moment for them. Your testimony has power to change lives, to lead people to Christ. That, my friend, is what it's all about. So the app, yes. So question here, what is the app called? Good job. So if you go to the App Store, just type in End Time Church, you're going to see an app that looks like that. I can't know if I can put it there. Very good. Right there, End Time Church. Um, Pastor Manti probably got a better picture than that than me. But you can go there, type that in, App Store. It doesn't matter if you got an Android, iPhone. Just type in End Time Church, and it'll pop up. You can get on there. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And uh, this is where we do a lot of our fellowship. Yeah, I just wanted to confirm that, uh, exhort you in that. uh, In fact, you can just type in app.endtime.church, and then whatever device you're on, it automatically brings you to that app store. Or even if it's just from your computer, it'll bring you to the web version of that. So, And yes, like Chris said, it's obviously totally free and available for you. Yep. Where'd you go? You, you left. Oh, I didn't know if I was if you were done. <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. We're yeah. done. The challenge has been has yeah, been made. Double challenge. Yeah. I, I okay. So yeah, I did. I stuck with the pen. And I got a bunch of stuff there now. I know nobody can actually read that probably because I failed penmanship. But uh, I think you wrote these the somewhere, right? Uh, there's a couple of these and us. Yeah. And it's funny because my birthday is Friday. And uh, so now I have something to accomplish by then. You know, I'll tell you what's really cool, though, is when we actually take the time and we write these these things in our life, these ways that God has revealed his goodness to us individually, how we've experienced that, we gain a deeper level of thankfulness and gratefulness for God in our lives that it will begin to change us over time as we read those things. You know, some people two or three days, four days, some people a week, some people a month. But you can't read about the goodness of God in your life without having change at some point into a more thankful and grateful person for the goodness of God. Amen. Hey, let's uh, – I, I have a challenge now. It's not really a challenge at all, truthfully. <laughs> but if you go to a section of our site, you just type in endtime.church slash survey – Survey says, 
Uh, you, sorry, old joke. Um, you're going to see a survey, and it's quite simply asking your opinions. How have we been doing? How have you been growing? Um, at your time here, whether that's you know, one or two times or two, three years now, um, we want to get a gauge on that because, like Chris saying, it's very, it's not easy to gauge that um, when you're not, you know, day to day life uh, with folks. So we want to know because we want to know what we need to improve on or what we need to, you know, back off or accelerate or whatever. Uh, or think of something new. I mean, as you were talking, man, I'm just thinking like, why don't we have a regular, uh, we should probably do this off the air, but let's go for it. Uh, why, why don't we have like some kind of regular, um, you know, public time of, you know, launch your, you know, here's how to start your home church. Uh, God, I hate to call it a training or whatever, but you know, just something like that. Because I think a lot of folks are, uh, being led in that way and maybe yeah. don't know what to do. I know I fell into that category several years ago because I felt like there was no place for me. Uh, you know, thankfully God did um, finally point me in the right direction. Like you're saying, you know, just keep at it. Um, and then, you know, it's, he does his stuff, but uh, yeah, sometimes it's just like, you know what? Yeah. You're supposed let's, let's do book of acts stuff here. Anyway, something like that would not be, crazy right well that's that's what i think the body of christ is going to i mean you, you read in scripture even talking about end times where i mean that's kind of what we're about here about the apostate church and the remnant you know church and you know i really believe that we're going back to that book book of acts model and, and honestly that's kind of what boot camp ministries is you know, part of the reason i'm in school now uh, getting my doctorate but you know developing that strategy for this next uh stage in next era, if you will. Mm -hmm. And um, I think home churches are going to be critical in that. No doubt. Back to the beginning, right? Not only in, um, you know, geographically, but uh, in time, right? Going back to the way we were instructed to do it. Because I'm looking through there and I'm, look, and we're not, obviously, like we're saying, find a local congregation. We're not against that in any way. I'm certainly not. I serve at one. You serve. I do too. <laughs> I Right. But at a, you know, at a certain point, you got to read the scripture and there's really no, not that much about it. I mean, there was a bunch of people in their houses and who knows what Paul was writing to when he said the church of this city or that. Yeah. You know, it's not like he's delivered it to a, to a church mailbox, you know? Um, so anyway, I'm just saying like, think, think about that, you know, try to, try to get outside our, 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 our suppositions and assumptions of like, you know, like Chris keeps saying, the Western mind uh, or the modern mind, even um, to say, how, how, well, Jesus, how do you actually want this done? And am I overcomplicating this? Am I overthinking this? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Uh, half of it, you know, part of it is just overthinking it. And the other half is, like you said, like trying to assume someone else is going to take care of this. Right? I think this is a great idea. Someone else should do it. <laughs> Hey, you want you want to you want to annoy Pastor Randy and <laughs> and me? Uh, say that. Yeah, I've just got this great idea. The Lord told me this awesome thing that we should do. Oh, good luck! Like you know, let me know how we can help you with that. Because the next thing inevitably is, well, you guys should do this. You guys should start this, right? I can't tell you how many times. But anyway, what we're saying is. Look, the guy told you for a purpose. He told you for a reason. He didn't tell Pastor Brady or etc. So that's what he it's that's faith. Right? You said it. Step out. He told you, acknowledge that. I want to experience this, Lord. Hey, you you took the step to to tell me. You saw fit to invest in me. So how do I invest that back? How do I sow that? Um back we're out? here to help nurture that we were here to help give you ideas to be a sounding board you know tell us your thoughts tell us your ideas and we can we can help you develop that strategy to to launch it we can we can help you um get there but you have to be the one to put feet to action you know no doubt that's basically it uh, so we want to encourage you in that and here's what we're talking about go there 
and uh, we want we're going to follow up with it. We're going to engage you on it. Um, and yeah, we do want to know who you are. Okay, it's not anonymous, but that's okay. I mean, at this point, what are we talking about here? If, if we're not willing to, we're talking about stepping out in faith and and, and uh, actually having an experience of God, and yet I don't want to give my my name. Come on, uh, we we got to get serious here. Well, and there's no way to follow up either. If if we don't know who right. you are, I mean, we're like this 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 is not meant to be a survey where um, we're just trying to puff our egos or anything. That's not it at all. No, it's not an we, opinion. We honestly, though. we right. honestly want to see. Are, are we making a difference in your life? Are we making a difference in your walk of faith? Are we, are we sowing into that? And are you able to apply what we're teaching you in your life to become a mature believer in Christ, to become a disciple maker? Um, and if we're not, we, we need to know that so we can figure out how to re-engage what we're doing uh, to be that, to be better at that. Uh, Cause we want this to be more than just a place where you gather to get information and get knowledge. I mean, you can do that anywhere. You know, we're, we're, we're calling ourselves end time church and that term church carries a lot of weight with it more than just anything else. We would call ourselves an end time fellowship if we were just trying to teach you stuff. I mean, there's so many other things, but we're trying to be a church. We want to do that in the best way possible in this new frontier in the digital world. So, you know, help us help you by giving us that information that, that we're requesting. And we want to touch bases with you. We want to see what you honestly feel and what you honestly think. Yeah. We're not a school. Um, right. We're, we're not just enrolling people and have a curriculum and thanks for, thanks for playing. And next, right. It's not what we're about. Let's bring up destinies. Yeah. Good one. Question here. What do you think? What's your answer pastor? So I see the time coming soon when I won't get to share the gospel safely in America. I, I agree, but you have to define safe, you know, so let's take a step back from that for defining safe. Trying to start a YouTube channel, and I'm doing outreach at work and among friends. So my assumption is that at work and amongst friends, you're telling them about Jesus. You're, you're sharing your story. You're doing, you're doing the right thing in that. I made one disciple. So you made, made a follower of Christ, and they're learning from you. That is incredible. That right there, if that's all you did and you made one disciple, every bit of effort you have put into this to that point has been worth it. Because it's eternal. Right. You've made a difference in one life. And that's that's what I, I, I can spend thousands of dollars and do all this stuff and spend many years of my life. And I might lead one person to Christ, but it's all worth it for one. Soul. Mm-hmm. So be encouraged with that. And today I feel the Lord tell me to read Acts 17. I'm seeing a connection in all that you are saying in my life. What is your advice? Well, let me turn to Acts 17 real quick and just get a quick foundation. OK, I know exactly where we're at now. So. You know, in this instance here, Paul's in uh, Thessalonica. That's when he's there for about three weeks. He's preaching, and uh, he basically gets kicked out because he's one of those turning the world upside down. And Jason and his household gets pulled out. They they get uh, money taken away, security. And then he goes to Berea. Uh, Paul does. You know, we call ourselves here oftentimes Berean believers because we search Scripture. Uh, then he goes and, and confronts those in Athens. And, uh, you know, the, the famous address there to the unknown God, we, we see that. So you're seeing in yourself, you feel the Lord telling you to read that. And what I would encourage you that is this, honestly, I see a, a connection with Athens and in America, we have so many strange gods, but we're re- really religious people, right? We all say we're really religious. We're all, I saw we're spiritual, right? In America. And we all follow the religion of self, I think in America, and we we dress that up however we want. We serve a God of our own making versus the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm. So we live in a very religious world. And so there can be a connection even in the West, in America, with Athens. Um, so how did Paul go about ministering to these very religious people? He went and he learned about kind of their their religious traditions, and he knew that in Athens, the Greeks specifically, they were they were big into philosophy, so they were learners. And so he was able to engage them based on their interests and talk about you know this unknown unknown God whom they serve, but who he knows. Um, so my advice to you while you read Acts chapter seventeen is to really study into to Athens and how Paul became all things 
to the Greeks so that he can win them more for Christ. And by, by saying that, I'm talking about how did he use the, what's familiar to them to preach the gospel? Because in this world we're living in, in the West, you're going to have to know what's familiar to people to teach them the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And at the same time, I would even take you back to the church in Berea. You're going to have to study. You're, the Bible says to study to show yourself approved. You're going to need to know the gospel, the true gospel, not the gospel that's tainted that you hear, you know, from these, you know, talking heads on the TV and things. It's not about self. It's about Christ. It's about selflessness. You got to learn about the true gospel. And then I would also go right back to Thessalonica and tell you that Paul was being accused of somebody who was turning over the world, uh, turning the world upside down. So you have to be willing to be somebody to turn somebody else's world upside down with the true gospel of Jesus Christ in a relatable way to them. So that's a connection of all three uh, together. So I hope that gives you a a good answer. Um, without knowing your specific situation, I couldn't give you details. But my advice is study that and follow that. How can you turn the world upside down with the true gospel in a contextual way to the people you're around? Mic drop. Yep. 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 Good. Very good. Yeah, guys. So, uh, the, the gauntlet is down. Um, yeah, there's a good comment. Mark in the, on our site says, if you see something, you own it. Yep. 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 That's, that's it. I mean, that's the bottom line. God is not messing around. He's not making mistakes. He's not Unless he says specifically, send this message, right? And he does that. Tell this person this, <laughs> right? Okay, fine, fine. Granted, sometimes that happens. But not often. Uh, not with me. I mean, it's very, very rare that he will say, go to this person and tell them this. They'll say with the Lord. I don't really want to mess with that. Um, but he will speak to us, right? He is our shepherd. Uh, and we are his sheep, and we're supposed to hear his voice. That's the way it works. Um, and he's not going to say, how's the weather today? You know, like, there's some... I know how the weather is. I created it. Um, I've got work for you, right? Father's business. Father's business. And so just just be about it. Um, hey, there we go. Thank you so much. This helps me. Mic drop. I'm going to be calling myself the mic drop prophet. Ha! Ah, really? Well, look at that. Well, praise the Lord. If it's if it's if it's if it's Holy Spirit, then it's always a mic drop. You, you didn't copyright that fast enough. I should <laughs> put the trademark on it. Um, trademark. On, it. I'm getting I'm getting lazy. Uh anyways, guys. Yeah, that's so that's what we're asking. All right. Do what Chris is asking by Friday. It shouldn't be too hard over these next couple of days. Just list out maybe you have one or two things, maybe you have twenty things, right? That God is that you've you've experienced him. You've you've made him your refuge. You've made him your. Uh, you've put your trust and confidence in him, like you were saying. Um, you have the fear of the Lord. You're you're obedient, and therefore, he's come through. And these are these times, right? Not you didn't hear about it from someone happened to someone else. You didn't see it happen to someone else. You got it. Yeah. And I'll tell you what: if you don't, after a period of time, feel more grateful and thankful to God for His goodness in your life, you can come back on. I'll bite you on live. You can call me a liar to my face. Virtually. <laughs> he's a Marine and he's allowing you to do this. I would take him up on that. Um, yeah, for sure. In fact, it's very, very, just in general, it's helpful, very helpful. At times we get overwhelmed. Maybe we get, you know, kind of down in the dumps or, you know, God, what, I don't see the fruit of this, right? We all have those, at least as ministers, it happens pretty often, I think. Um, I don't know what you're doing here, God. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Am I doing something wrong? Um, but then you take a second, take stock and take, you know, uh, just take stock of what, go back over your time, the years or the months, um, and make a little list. I just did, funnily enough, I just did this last week, um, in preparation for that conference with how Fadi was like, boy, I feel like I'm doing a lot here, but what do I have to show for it? You know what I mean? Um, but then you just start writing stuff down and I've got 15, 20 things that the Lord has done with Wings of the Eagle in the past three years alone. And so, and and I showed Taryn and she's like, dude, that's amazing. Like, it's, it's almost unbelievable. It's like, it's unreal. How How is that possible? I'm like, yeah, that's how I feel as well. 
Um, and actually, I'm going to make a little video of it just to you know show the visual. It is amazing. Um, so point is, it's not just you know one example. You, it happened to you too. Um, so make the list, check it twice, okay, and do it by Friday in the app, End Time Church app. Put it in the community. This is my thing. At least, right? Just we're just asking for one thing, right? So we're checking that list twice, and I tell you what, there's going to be cold and stockings and switches of people that don't get it run right. I tried to cut the, the cut the uh, <laughs> thing off right there, but uh, no, he kept we're going. I'll, With I'll the go switches, there. the switches, and all. I never heard of that one. Oh yeah, cold oh, and switches. Crazy. That's what you're. That's some oh, kind of Kentucky. Yeah. You know. Um, <laughs> you're switching your stocking, man. Uh, anyway, so one thing, just put one thing in the app, okay, and then hit the survey, right? Just hit that address right there. Take the survey, fill it out. What are we doing? Uh, in your opinion, okay, it's not a test. It's just from your uh, experience with us, you know, in your time here, what uh, what has happened right or or not enough or what is it? Just get specific, and you'll see on the on the survey. Uh, we get specific with the with the question. So uh, fill that out. It'd be awesome to know. It doesn't matter if, you know, leadership on down to somebody who's just viewing tonight. doesn't matter. Uh, go ahead and, and do that, please. Um, and that's that's it. I think that's what the Lord has to say tonight, my friends. So thank you, Pastor Anderson, man. Um, we'll be back on next week with the book of Daniel, chapter 9. Uh, you know, easy, easy one, Daniel 9. Um, boy, I, I think it's going to be called the Master Prophecy because that's kind of what it is. It's like, this is it, guys, you know. All right, you want to know? Here it is. The, the skeleton Lord. key prophecy. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty Halloween-y or something. Uh, holy, holy Halloween. Open all right. All doors. Amen. Uh, and he does. And uh, no man can shut it. So uh, we bless you. I bless you, Pastor Chris, um, and you and your family and your, your new work and your awesome wife that you don't deserve. I don't. Because we I'm all agree that we all agree that I have that no idea don't. how she puts up with me sometimes. I mean, <laughs> he's, she's got grace. I don't know. The Lord's got more grace than her, but that's about it. Yeah, <laughs> she's she's incredible. Yeah, I know the feeling. So, uh, bless you guys and uh, communicate with us at any time. Like we said, you know how to do it. And by Friday, we'll see it in the app and get those surveys in there, and then we'll be back. Next Monday night, God willing, Lord willing, because we just don't know, guys. Today is the day of salvation. We don't know if we're coming back, waking up tomorrow morning. It's just the truth. Uh, so be about it today uh, while it's called today and work while it's light. And Lord uh, willing, or, creek don't rest. That's something about that creek and the switches. <laughs> I don't know about that language, but it must be right. Uh, so until next time, guys, four uh, ministers all over this planet uh, that are fellowshipping with us. We praise God for you and I uh, will see you next time. Bless y'all.